You said you've got a T-Rex. Uh-huh. Say again. <gasps> We have a T-Rex. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the most profound, intense, or visually striking movie moments that we needed time to recover from. You've kept him alive so that he can die at the proper moment. FYI, there are some spoilers on this list, and we're not including animated movies. Number 20, Trinity Test, Oppenheimer. Are we saying there's a chance that when we push that button, we destroy the world. Chances are near zero. Before the Trinity test, we're treated to bracing montages and rapid-fire snippets of preparations and safety precautions. The entire movie has been leading up to this. The urgency is clear. It's time to see if Dr. Oppenheimer's theories will become reality. The Trinity test and the revelation of the first atomic explosion to the world was one of the most important moments in the 20th century. Upon detonation, the movie slows to a crawl. Where we might expect crashes, booms, and bangs, silence fills the previously busy and frenetic soundtrack. We're only left with the intense and oppressive light of the first nuclear detonation in all its destructive and seemingly never-ending clouds of fire. It dawns on Oppenheimer, and us, that he's opened Pandora's box. We're still living with the consequences nearly a century later. What was really interesting was going back and trying to understand what these guys were thinking and the terrible decisions that were placed in front of them. I don't know if we can be trusted with such a weapon, but I know the Nazis can. Number 19, The Crop Duster, North by Northwest. That's funny. What? That plane's dusting crops where there ain't no crops. In this classic scene from suspense maestro Alfred Hitchcock, Cary Grant plays an innocent man on the run who ends up stranded on a country road. He catches sight of a crop duster in a distant field. That's not really out of the ordinary. But isn't it coming just a little bit too close? The constant shots of the plane heading right for the camera is such an effective and efficient way to put us right there in the scene. We may know it's not real, but it's hard to shut off that part of our brain that gets antsy when something big and threatening is coming right for us. What's even more amazing is the scene is mostly without music of any kind. Number 18, Night Vision, The Silence of the Lambs. From the moment we realize FBI trainee Clarice Starling has stumbled upon the lair of serial killer Buffalo Bill, our blood pressure is out of whack for the rest of the movie. Pursuing him into his basement of terrors, Clarice is suddenly thrown into darkness. We assume the killer's POV as he stalks her through the eerie green haze of his night vision goggles. Our agent might just be outmatched as she reaches out in the dark for her attacker who could strike at any moment. The villain is totally in control, and it's a terrifying position to be in. The entire scene is a masterclass in suspense. <laughs> Number 17, The Bagel. Everything, everywhere, all at once. I got bored one day. And I put everything on a bagel. It may be about big, complicated things like the multiverse, but this new classic is also stunningly grounded in the most universal of human experiences. Despite all the noise of other universes, what it's really about is a woman saving her daughter from her own despair. The bagel is where we finally find peace, Evelyn. Rather than fight her as she has done the entire movie, in the climax, Evelyn and her family save Joy from the swirling void of the bagel. It's love that saves her, not some interdimensional battle. This reconciliation is heart-wrenching, not just because they're both in so much pain, but because what Evelyn says is true. She could be anything, anywhere, but no matter their disagreements, she still wants to be with her daughter. I will always, always want to be here with Number 16, The Standoff, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. $200,000 is a lot of money. We're gonna have to earn it. Sergio Leone's three-hour spaghetti western finds three armed outlaws facing each other in a duel for a pile of stolen Confederate gold buried somewhere in a desert cemetery. 
They find themselves in a wordless standoff for several minutes as each man waits to draw his gun. The movie ratchets up the tension through editing and progressively intrusive close-ups of each man as the music becomes faster, louder, and more epic. Who's going to go for their gun first? Who's going to make it out of this alive? Will anyone make it out alive? The suspense is practically killing us. Number 15. Private Pile's Revenge – Full Metal Jacket This Stanley Kubrick movie showed us that the horrors of war aren't reserved for the battlefield. Throughout the first half of this Vietnam War film, a group of Marine recruits are terrorized by the most sadistic drill sergeant in all of cinema. One recruit, nicknamed Private Pile for his perceived lack of intelligence, is driven to the breaking point by constant abuse from his superior officer and his bunkmates. What side was that, Private Pile? Sir, left side, sir! Are you sure, Private Pile? Sir, yes, sir! How it ends is absolutely chilling, but somehow nothing beats actor Vincent D'Onofrio's menacing stare as he holds his loaded rifle. It's such a jaw-dropping moment that many critics thought the actual war scenes in the second half couldn't live up to it. What is your major malfunction, numbnuts? Didn't mommy and daddy show you enough attention? Number 14. The Sunken Place. Get out. Now, sink into the floor. Wait, 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 wait. Sink. How do you visually portray a void? A place that's not even a place, just a prison of the mind? Well, Jordan Peele found a way. In the scene that gave Get Out its most haunting image, Chris is hypnotized by his girlfriend's mother, who uses his past trauma to send him to the aptly titled Sunken Place. You're paralyzed. Just like that day when you did nothing. You did nothing. Watching him unable to reconnect with his body, his consciousness floating in space, as she takes control of him. We already know something is up with this family, but when we see just what's at work here, the dread, hopelessness, and evil of it all is almost overwhelming. Now you're in the sunken place. Number 13. I'm finished. There will be blood. I'm finished. Ruthless, sadistic, and ultimately poisoned by his own greed, prospector-turned-oil baron Daniel Plainview ends there will be blood friendless, alone, and covered in a preacher's blood. After tricking the holy man who has dogged him for years into revealing his own moral impurity, Plainview unleashes a torrent of abuse. His unhinged analogy about milkshakes is a perfect showcase for Daniel Day-Lewis's way of making something that could sound ludicrous into an intense and thrilling movie moment. I drink your milkshake. I drink it up! Don't bully me, Daniel! <laughs> the sudden violence of the ending is filled with thematic meaning, but most of all, it's just incredibly shocking. Number 12. What's in the box? 7. John Doe is clearly a calculated and high-minded serial killer, but the depths of his machinations aren't fully known until the climax. I can't wait for you to see. I really can't. Having lured the two arresting officers to the desert, the delivery of a bloody box inspires Doe to reveal the final part of his master plan. He tells Brad Pitt's Detective Mills that the box contains the head of the young detective's wife. I took a souvenir. Her pretty head. As the pieces come together, we're left gripping our seats as we realize Mills is being compelled to kill Doe in retaliation and embody the last sin, Wrath. Saw you with the box. What was in the box? Director David Fincher's master stroke is that he never lets us see what's in the box. What may be the movie's most horrific and unfair twist is left to our imagination. Number 11. Coffee's Execution – The Green Mile John Coffey is a black man wrongly accused and sentenced to death for the heinous murder of two young white girls. The truth is that he has supernatural power to heal the sick and dying, and was found with the dead girls after failing to heal them. I couldn't help it. I tried to take it back, but it was too late. Despite knowing the truth, the officers of the prison are forced to go through with his execution, while uncaring witnesses watch on. Coffee's acceptance and relief at leaving this world doesn't make it better. He kill them what they love. That's how it is every day, all over the world. 
If anything, it makes the waste and the cruelty of everything he's gone through even more sickening. Number 10. Call It, No Country for Old Men Amidst all the drug dealing and robbery set against the deserts of West Texas, Anton Chigurh is by far the most terrifying person in this Coen Brothers crime drama. Actor Javier Bardem plays the stone-faced hitman with no conscience or compassion. What's the most you ever lost on a coin toss? In an early scene, he demonstrates how he approaches killing like a game. Sugar toys with a gas station proprietor who knows something's not right with him, but can't quite put his finger on it. 1958. It's been traveling 22 years to get here. And now it's here. And it's either heads or tails. Of course, we know he's a vicious killer. The way they talk around each other becomes increasingly tense until Sugar makes the man unwittingly play heads or tails for his life. Don't put it in your pocket, sir. Don't put it in your pocket, it's your lucky quarter. Number 9. Farmhouse Interrogation – Inglorious Bastards The first 20 minutes of Quentin Tarantino's Inglorious Bastards are a taut and constricting chamber drama played in multiple languages. During the German occupation of France, the sadistic and disarming SS Colonel Hans Landa arrives at a farmer's house and acts the part of the smiling house guest. But the facade slowly falls away as Landa puts the screws to the farmer about his belief that he's hiding a family of Jewish fugitives on his property. You're sheltering enemies of the state, are you not? The way Landa wears away at the man's sense of loyalty to his neighbors, first in French, then in English, is unsettling and efficient. Once the scene comes to its bombastic and tragic conclusion, Landa has completely run circles around us. Je prends Number 8. The Snap – Avengers Infinity War Having collected all the Infinity Stones, the villainous alien Thanos activates the Blip, a catastrophic event which will turn half of the universe's living creatures to dust. What follows is one of the most tragic and unthinkable sequences in the entire MCU. Steve. Fans watched in disbelief as Thanos' snap did away with many beloved characters. Black Panther's T'Challa, Scarlet Witch Wanda Maximoff, and even the young Spider-Man Peter Parker all turned to dust before our eyes. Did it start? I don't feel so good. Parker's death is especially unsettling, as he begs not to die before withering away in his mentor's arms. Fans would have to wait a year for the ending to be reversed, but for once, the villain won out. Oh god. Number 7. Seconds from Rescue – The Mist Stranded without gas or hope for escape from the invading monsters, the group of survivors from a besieged supermarket make a silent agreement to go out on their own terms. Oh, After only David is left, U.S. military appears. The mist departs, and within seconds, the situation seems totally under control. David is forced to realize he killed his fellow survivors, including his eight-year-old son, for nothing. The mist is not just a horror story about monsters. It's about what happens when people are abandoned by the institutions that ground our everyday lives. It's ironic, then, that the military, an institution meant to protect us, does end up working. And that's what makes it such a downer ending. No! No! Number 6. Chestburster – Alien Before we knew just what the titular villain is capable of, things seemed weirdly low-key and almost normal for the Nostromo crew. Then comes one of the most memorable sequences in movie history. Celebrating the surgical removal of an alien life form from his face, an astronaut named Kane begins seizing violently during dinner. What's the matter? <laughs> the food ain't that bad, oh, baby. Kane. <laughs> his fellow crew members watch in disbelief as his chest bursts open, and a reptilian creature emerges from his torso. <laughs> It's pretty safe to say mainstream audiences had never seen anything like it before. Even decades later, it still has the power to freak us out. Number 5. Snape's Memories – Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, Part 2 
Severus Snape was a pain in Harry Potter's side for most of the series. Still, his final moments had diehards and casual fans alike practically sobbing in the theater. You have your mother's eyes. But even if his death scene weren't enough, Snape's memories, which Harry is able to magically collect from his teardrops, had us breathless. A part of Voldemort lives inside him. We've not only learned the true nature of Harry's connection with Voldemort, but we also learned that Snape's love for Harry's mother compelled him to protect him. As the series ramps up to its epic conclusion, these revelations spill out like a frantic confession. They answer questions that have been on our minds since the first movie, and then throw us for a loop by telling us things we'd never even considered. Number 4. Normandy Invasion – Saving Private Ryan Putting the camera right in the middle of the action, the opening scenes of this World War II epic create an explosive and deeply disturbing battle sequence. For 10 minutes, bullets rip through the air, explosives rain down, and characters we just met are gunned down and set ablaze before our eyes. Despite the shaky cam approach, director Steven Spielberg ensures we never miss a detail. He forces us to look at the real devastation of war in all its terror and shell shock. This is not a Hollywood epic with the bells and whistles of studio sets and unnatural lighting. It's raw, bloody, and visceral. We're in business, definitely! I'll sign it all! Number 3. Stargate Sequence 2001 A Space Odyssey Stanley Kubrick's philosophical space epic is about a lot of things. Trapped astronauts, a killer supercomputer, human evolution, and godlike alien life forms are just the tip of the iceberg. But if you're looking for explanations, you won't find them here. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. The last act contains little to no dialogue as Dr. David Bowman flies his pod into the alien monolith, unwittingly entering an alternate dimension. Haunting music and a barrage of cutting-edge psychedelic neon light effects wowed audiences in 1968. Even if you aren't vibing with it, it's such a surreal and bizarre way to end a movie that you can't help but gawk. Number 2. Brachiosaurus Sighting – Jurassic Park The first time Sam Neill, Laura Dern, and Jeff Goldblum's characters enter Jurassic Park, the scene plays out like pure magic. We only get their reactions first, but the slow build has us on the edge of our seats when we finally get a look at our first dinosaur, a Brachiosaurus passing by us. No one captures wonder and awe on screen like Steven Spielberg. Whether it's the character's excitement, John Williams' score, or the wonder of the groundbreaking CGI effects, it's hard not to sit and stare in amazement at what a movie can do. Welcome to Jurassic Park. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Arriving in Oz – The Wizard of Oz Toto, I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. The brooding, sepia-toned life of little Dorothy Gale from Kansas is turned upside down when a cyclone picks up her house and drops it into the land of Oz. To immerse viewers in this vibrant new world, the filmmakers behind this 1939 classic decided to film the scenes in Oz in lush, out-of-this-world color. The Technicolor world Judy Garland steps into is striking, glamorous, and full of the elaborate artistry that made the Golden Age golden. More than a gimmick, this change highlights what makes the movie so special. Even a child watching it now might be totally shocked by the sudden transition from sepia tone to full color. Are you a good witch or a bad witch? But I've already told you, I'm not a witch at all. Witches are old and ugly. Do you agree with our picks? Yeah. That was good. Get your jaw off the ground and leave us a comment. 
Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.